Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be looking at this uh, camera. Uh, this is a Canon EF camera, not to be confused with the EF lens mount which came out in 1987. But this camera was produced between ooh, 1973 to 1978. And unusually for Canon it uses a uh, copal shutter and it's an electromechanical shutter. Now at this time in the early 70s most photographers, especially professional photographers, were very very wary of electronics. Um, electronics was still in its infancy and people didn't really trust anything that was electronic, had electronic shutters or electronic metering for example. Um, we'd had selenium cells which you've seen in some of the handheld light meters, didn't require a battery. And then we had the CDS cells, which did require a battery, but weren't particularly sensitive in low light. This camera is a bit unusual in that it uses silicon cells in the light meter, so it has quite a, a good sensitivity to low levels of light. This thing can measure light from a single candle, so it's down to minus 2 EV, so it's quite advanced. It was a backup camera to the Canon F1, um, which is a sort of the competitor to the Nikon or Nikon F2. And this was sort of a non-removable pentaprism kind of camera. It is very, very heavy. It's very sturdily built. Um, you can break someone's skull with it. It is, it is a very solid, chunky piece. It's metal. Top plate's metal. Bottom's metal. Oh, chassis and everything's metal in it. Very well-constructed camera. And the other feature that it has is it has automation to a certain degree. Because it uses a mechanical shutter for the speeds between half a second and a thousandth of a second, um, there's no real way of sorting out aperture priority. You'll notice in quite a lot of these videos that cameras like the Topcon Unirex, for example, the Kanikas, they're all shutter priority cameras and that's because the shutters are mechanical and it was the aperture that's adjusted. So these are shutter priority cameras where you as the operator would select the suitable shutter speed and the camera would select the, uh, the corresponding aperture and set it for you. So that's a degree of automation. You can also use them in manual mode of course. And the advantage of this camera is even if the battery is flat um, you can still carry on using it at the shutter speeds between half a second and a thousandth of a second. The shutter on this one does go down to 30 seconds, which is quite a phenomenally long time for a camera. You don't see many cameras with a 30 second uh, shutter speed. But between half a second and 30 seconds, that is the part that's electronically controlled. So you do need batteries to use the, the long exposure side of it and Canon sort of quoted that this is what makes it reliable because people used to count like you know a thousand, two thousand, three thousand for seconds etc as this was said to be far more reliable. So let's give you an overview of the camera. This is fitted with a FD mount. Um, this is an FD mount camera. This is a 50mm 1.8 SC, that's spectra coated, so that is a single coated lens. Um, the 1.4s are SSCs, which is super spectra coated, which is the multi coated lenses. So on the front here, we really only have the lens. We have a self timer, standard kind of fashion. This lever, if you push it in, is going to work as the uh, the depth of field preview so it's gonna it says let me turn it on why isn't that stopping down then Um, 
we also have this switch down here which enables us to lock the stop down this we use with the older FL lenses because they only had stop down metering rather than the full aperture metering that this camera offered a standard and then we also have a mirror lock up so by moving it to the end position that has now moved the mirror up out of the way you can see the mirror there moving up and down so it's got mirror lock up as well and that takes it back to their self timer you push this button in here Ugh. it's quite fiddly because there's a lock on this Gonna push this button down and it springs around and you can set the self timer Clockwork. There we go. And that just returns back to its normal position. On the bottom, we have a the usual pushing to rewind to disengage the uh, advance mechanism. Tripod bush housing. It takes two batteries. It runs on the Mercury type batteries, the six two fives. But the one big advantage of this camera today is that it has a built-in voltage regulator. So you can use it with one and a half volt batteries without having to make adjustments for the metering because obviously the voltage regulator brings the voltage down. So this will run quite happily on these LR9 one and a half volt cells which are readily available. Won't hurt, won't hurt the camera at all. And the voltage regulator will uh, sort out the... Uh, the required voltage for the metering. This red button here is a battery check so when you push it you can see that the red light on the top comes on. Okay moving around the camera we have a PC sync cord rather cleverly hidden away behind this little flap here. On the back of the camera we have this called the cat switch and normally this would be in this position, which is for normal metering. Um, with the uh, dedicated flash, which is the 133D, if you switch it over to this position, it will communicate with the flash gun. And that's what these extra pins are for on this hot shoe. And it passes information to the flash gun regarding focus, etc. So it calculates the exposure automatically with the appropriate flash gun. But in normal operation the cat switch is set to normal. Obviously viewfinder eyepiece. We have the on off switch. Which is a little bit strange. When you turn it on, the advanced lever pops out 15 degrees, which is kind of cute. And obviously uh, in the centre here we have a multiple exposure feature so if you hold this in and advance the film um, it cocks the shutter but doesn't advance the film and it doesn't move the frame counter on so this is for multiple exposures on there and this side just a lug strap nothing else to see there so on the top we have a frame counter big shutter speed dial and it hangs out over the front so that you can quite easily change your, uh, your shutter speeds and you can see it flash syncs 125th because this shutter unlike a lot of Canons is a vertically travelling shutter rather than a horizontal one um, threaded shutter release button up here as we said before the hot shoe with the dedicated contacts um, it will work in automatic um, aperture priority mode um, with the dedicated flash gun we have a film plane indicator that we use for macro for measuring the distances between uh, the film plane and the back element of a lens. Obviously you've seen the LED for the battery check. This is an exposure memory. So for example with backlit subjects you can take the reading, you can store the reading, recompose, take the picture. Pretty common function nowadays. And this is our ASA dial we just lift goes from 3200 which is quite high for 73 
and it goes all the way down to 12. Usual rewind crank and what became the norm pull up to open the back. You can see inside we've got the pressure plate. We've got a easy take up spool with lots of slots and lots of little teeth to grab hold of the leader. Here we can see the vertically travelling copal shutter. And at the end this is where our film's gonna go. My cut gets in the way of the bank. E. So I said it's got a battery check on it and the normal shutter speeds um, between a half a second and a thousand are mechanical and the longer ones I'll say all the way down to 30 seconds. So if we put it on 30 seconds You can see the LED illuminate um, on the long exposures. So it lets you know that the shutter's open. We'll see on 30 seconds there. So you can see that that's uh, a very long exposure time. Inside of the viewfinder across the bottom it displays a whole range of shutter speeds and then the one that's highlighted is the one that you're actually sitting on and down the right hand side, there we go, it displays the uh, apertures with a needle. So if the lens is set to um, the automatic position, which on this lens is the A position right at the end, the needle will tell you the aperture that the camera is setting. And in manual mode, it's telling you the aperture that you need to set on the lens yourself. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's put the film in it. And uh, that's the sort of introduction to the Canon EF camera. Very nice, solid camera. It's very well built. And uh, to load it, I'm going to open the back. A lot of this extra film to use up. This is out of date extra film. So I'm going to put a load of this in there. There's no DX coding on this, so the film obviously drops into that side. As you know, my advice is always to rewind it until you can take up the slack, like so. Wind it on. This is a bit Put it into the take up spool, click the shutter, wind on until the top sprocket is in line with that sprocket, and we can close the back. Oh, I cut this right nuisance on the back of this. Wind on, and we don't really want 30 to a second anymore, or 30 seconds anymore. So you know it's being advanced because this is going around and it's, uh, it's there on one now so it's usually three that you wind it on to get it there. It's eBay again and then you set this to your film speed this is 200 but because it's slide, it's negative film, I want to overexpose it. So I'm going to set it on 100. Give it one stop of overexposure. And there you go. That is the Canon EF. When you turn it off, you have to turn it off, otherwise the batteries will drain. It's one downside to this. Um, put that to the off position, and then you can just push the, the, the uh, film advance lever forward. But yeah, very nice camera. Highly recommended if you can get hold of one. Uh, FD lenses are readily available and FD mount lenses are readily available. They're not hugely expensive and the quality is pretty good. It's Canon after all. So there we are, introduction, an overview and film load.
quite a beautiful camera. They're always in black. They're quite often called black beauties. There was no chrome version. I might say between 73 and 78, so only a five year production run, quite a short lived camera. But yeah, very nice. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope to see you in the next one.